The planet has experienced five previous mass extinction events. The last one occurring 65.5 million years ago, which wiped out the dinosaurs from existence. Experts now believe we're in the middle of a sixth mass extinction event. More than 100 species are going extinct every year because of, well, humans, the most destructive species on the planet. I'm an unemployed zoologist on a mission to find as many species as possible before they're cancelled from existence. Join me on a journey that will take us from the highest mountains to the deepest oceans in search of the incredible wildlife that calls our planet home. In the words of the great Steve Irwin, if we can touch people of our animals, then they want to save them. So let's go touch some people. Wait, that sounds... <laughs> We started our journey in the beautiful country of Pakistan. We've come to Mopur National Park in Banigala to see what kind of wildlife we can find here today. And right off the bat, we're greeted by a beautiful jungle babbler. The jungle babbler is a common resident in most parts of the Indian subcontinent. It's uh, often found in forested areas or in huge parks around cities. Before I could continue waffling on about the jungle babbler, the crew spotted something I'd never seen before in the wild. That's a white-breasted water hen. You can tell it's that because of the way that it is. During their uh, breeding season, they make these loud croaking noises. So what it's doing right now is basically the equivalent of setting up a Tinder profile. While I was filming this mating call, something caught my eye above the tree line. This 80s punk rock looking bird with the ridiculous mohawk is a Himalayan bulbul, a species of songbird in the bulbul family. These birds are fairly common in Central and South Asia. But before I could talk more about them, we spotted one of the most beautiful birds in Pakistan. This is a blue-tailed bee eater. It's usually found near water and like other bee eaters, it predominantly eats flying insects, especially bees, wasps and hornets. As we moved deeper into the park, we came across a stream with a lot more activity. That's a little cormorant. Uh, they forage in lowland freshwater bodies like small ponds and large lakes and uh, streams kind of like this one. Uh, sometimes they're also found in coastal estuaries. Little cormorants are strong swimmers which capture their prey underwater, mainly consisting of fish. They propel themselves underwater using their webbed feet and captured fish are often brought to the surface to swallow. During this time, other birds, including little cormorants and egrets, may attempt to steal their catch. They're often found perched on a rock uh, just after coming out of the water with their wings spread out. Although previously debated, studies are now suggesting that this behavior aids the cormorants in drying their wings after a dive. Soon after this, we spotted a rock dove. But they're fairly common. It's a solid 5 out of 10 bird. Nothing really that exciting, so we're gonna skip over this one. And then a black drongo landed on a fence right next to us, and honestly, it's one of the most majestic birds I've ever seen. But sadly, we didn't get enough footage of it, so we're gonna do another skip. As I looked across the littered shoreline in the distance, I spotted a ridiculously large mongoose on the hunt. The Indian grey mongoose is a generally solitary species, especially active during the early mornings and the early evenings, searching for reptiles. They move with a quick trot, constantly scanning the area for food. 
They're well known for their skill in fighting snakes using special techniques and adaptations. It's looking for snakes and frogs to eat right now. Uh, I've actually never seen one before in the wild and it's absolutely massive. Unfortunately, I switched out of video mode to capture a few pictures of the mongoose and I missed the opportunity to record it succeeding in its hunt. But I did manage to capture some decent pictures of the frog it caught for dinner. As we moved deeper into the park, I came across something I'd been eagerly waiting for all day. Those skinny tall boys on the cow are called cattle egret. From this shot, that name's pretty self-explanatory, but for some of our slower viewers, like the Khanabadosh filming crew, they're called cattle egrets because they're found on or around cattle. This species maintains a special relationship with cattle and other large grazing mammals. The cattle egret removes ticks and flies from the cattle and consumes them. And this mutualistic relationship seems to benefit both species, but it has been implicated in the spread of tick-borne diseases among animals. They nest in colonies, usually near bodies of water and often found with other wading birds. The nest is a simple platform of sticks in trees or shrubs. Adult cattle egrets have few predators, but birds or mammals may raid their nests, and chicks may be lost to starvation, calcium deficiency, or disturbance from other large birds. Cattle egrets are genuinely one of the most gorgeous egrets. Those vibrant orange patches on their head and neck really make them stand out. We moved along to the water's edge, and as we hit there, we saw another species of egret entering the shallow water. That's a little egret, and it's on the hunt, so we might just get lucky here. Little egrets use a variety of methods to procure their food. At the moment, it's stocking its prey in shallow water, often shuffling its feet to disturb small fish. That cormoran from earlier would have surely disturbed some fish, and the egrets are quick to take advantage. Their diet mainly consists of fish, but amphibians, small reptiles, mammals, and birds are also on the menu. Let's see if this strategy pays off for this little egret. And surely enough, this little egret has found something for dinner. It's caught itself a snake. Of repositioning in its mouth, and then it's time to swallow it whole. Having captured that little egret hunting was such a rewarding moment for us. But the sun is setting now, so it's time to call it a day. What a day it was, though. We saw 10 different species in their natural habitats in the span of a few hours. Join us next time as we head deep into the jungles of Pakistan to see what elusive creatures lurk there. This was our first video of the series, so any suggestions are greatly appreciated. Be sure to leave a comment below to let us know how we can improve our videos. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Until next time, this is Raja Osama with the Khanabadosh boys. Allah Hafiz.